Everybody, C Note here, and welcome to Dopamine, the show that is all about mental health empowerment using personality typology. Today, we're going to be talking about and then continuing our series of talking about personality development 101. We're going to talk about decision making and decision making being thinking or feeling. Now, before we continue, I want to let you guys know that this is basically a sort of beginner's course about personality development. And this is the free section. There's gonna be more that you can purchase below that is gonna be all about giving advice based on a lot of this information. We're gonna talk about big topics in terms of career, relationships, parenting, stuff like that, how to use this as a tool in your life. And in the future, we're gonna be doing a cognitive functions course which is all about sort of like what this four letter code actually means in detail. And then we're gonna be doing a passive profiling course that is gonna be all about basically the, the culmination of all of this. So you can learn how to understand like people in your lives and be able to identify which type they are based on certain behaviors, patterns that we've seen and, and uh, how we can sort of type celebrities and stuff in a responsible and thoughtful way that pushes this medium forward in a professional manner. So if you wanna be a part of that, any of those courses, let me know in the comments below and I'll make sure you are included. So let's talk about decision-making. Decision-making is probably one of the places where <clears throat> it is most obvious to people. There are thinkers and there are feelers. I think that's pretty obvious to a lot of people. The one sort of mishap that tends to happen is the assumption that men are thinkers and women are feelers. And that's simply not true. There are so many situations in which women are thinkers and men are more emotional. But because of the way that culture perpetuates this sort of like, you know, gendered uh, decision making dichotomy, because dichotomies are easy for people to understand, that it can sort of muddy the pool of like how we think we're supposed to behave. So a lot of feeler men may end up becoming more uh, stoic and, and trying to be analytical when that is not elegant and natural to them and vice versa for women. There's a lot of perception around like motherhood and parenting and being a female and being uh, and dating between genders as well and all of the genders in between <clears throat> that that there's this idea that you're supposed to behave a certain way, that looking like a mother has to look a certain way. And there are definitely thinker mothers out there. There's the um, the show Bad Moms, which is not safe for work. It's like that kind of thing. So if you're sensitive to that stuff, like I wouldn't watch it. But I think if you're interested in <clears throat> sort of the lives, thoughts and experiences of thinker women, Bad Moms is such a good show <laughs> about all of that. Um, <clears throat> So I kind of skipped to the explanation, but thinkers are basically focused on analytical data. They're focused on objectivity. What makes sense? What is provable? What is, you know, what is logical straightforward? You know, pushing the emotions aside, what works? What makes sense? What is direct? Tell me the thing, that kind of stuff. And then emotional, you know, emotionals, <laughs> feelers are going to be more focused on how it feels for them, how it feels in their body, how it feels for other people. And depends again on which type of feeler you are. That again goes into cognitive functions. But emotional people are going to be making decisions based on the emotional experiences. So, <clears throat> If you've got a situation in which uh, you need to make a choice, a feeler is going to make a choice based on how the group feels or how they feel, depending on which type of feeler they are. And then the thinkers are going to be making decisions based on what makes the most logical sense, regardless of anyone's feelings. Now, as you kind of grow and develop and integrate, there's going to be a little bit more of a mesh between the two. Like I said, with introverts and extroverts, intuitives and sensors, it's not necessarily like one is cut off from the other. There are going to be certainly spectrums of people that are going to be leaning far in one direction or far in one other direction. But these things are dichotomies. So they're tethered together. It's sort of like sort of like waves, you know, you kind of go up and down, like one's going to be present most of the time. But if you hit a big wave, the other one's going to need some attention. 
Sometimes thinkers need to make emotional choices. Sometimes feelers need to make logical choices. And balancing that dichotomy of yourself, noticing that if you're not getting energy from making certain decisions that you might need to honor the other type of decision is important. So I think most of the time, if you're a thinker, it's going to be pretty obvious. You're just going to be more like a, a little bit more <clears throat> focused on, you know, what is. And I think thinkers can make a lot of jokes that a lot of feelers would get really upset about. And feelers would make jokes that some thinkers could get joke, get, could get upset about. <laughs> uh, we don't talk about that enough. But uh, thinkers tend to make light of really difficult and dark topics. So we can make jokes around that thing because thinking is a form of protecting our emotions. And feelers are using their emotions to kind of sometimes having to avoid uh, you know, making cold choices that are going to be better for everybody in the long term or even better for themselves in the long term. So the tricky part of that, again, I think is the sort of gendered aspect of that and making sure that you're making decisions that are honoring your individuality. So again, there's going to be so many external systems in your life whether that's like your job, your your friends that you hang out with, your parents, your uh, religious system, whatever, or history <laughs> leading up to this point, there's going to be a lot around the expectation of who you are and how you show up to the world. And if you're a thinker woman, it's important to honor that. Even though you're going to have to mold and adapt sometimes, that's fine. Uh, the same is true for men. You're a feeler man and there's going to be more expectations to culturally be more stoic and manly, right? Manly is like thinkers. I don't, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so when you're integrating the two and you're kind of balancing and flowing, it's a little bit harder for people to put you into a box because you're sort of balancing between the two ideas and you're not one thing or another. So that's something I'm trying to sort of share throughout this entire process is that even though you're predominantly an introvert, there's an extra, you still have to get out of the house or you might be predominantly an extrovert. You still need to like chill out and be quiet and sleep. And even if you are an intuitive and you're pattern recognizing and curious about what's happening behind the stage, you still need to watch the show. And even if you're so focused on watching the show, it is kind of interesting to know a little bit about what's going on behind the curtain. So in the same sense, if you're a thinker and you're asking the analytical information and data, and you're like, you know what, for the most part, these are all the things that make sense. But how is what makes sense going to affect people? That's important to ask. And how is the emotional choices, even if we're going to make an emotional choice to protect everyone's feelings, how does that translate to what makes sense for myself or for everyone? Because if we're just trying to protect emotions, sometimes we might not be able to move forward and be honest with each other. Or we might not be able to build the systems that we need because we're just too busy trying to swat away our, all of the bad moral decisions. You know, So there's, there's notions of, of thinking needs to be protected in a lot of ways, feeling needs to be protected in a lot of ways. And it can get really tricky because decisions are important to us. So if the decision we've made doesn't jive with someone else's decision, that's where arguments occur. And I think it's important to separate the idea of arguments from discussion. Discussion involves asking questions. So if someone's in a decision-making space, you need to be in a learning space. Where if you're in a decision-making space, they need to be in a learning space. And you have to be willing to have that interchange back and forth. That's some of the challenges of the internet is that we are experiencing basically a lot of people's decisions on the internet. It's really hard, unless you show up on video, it's really hard to show how you've, it's really hard to show being in a listening space because no one sees you listening on the internet, right? They only see the decisions you've made. They only see the comments you've left, the tweets you've posted, the thing that you've decided to share. It's all about decisions on the internet. That's why I think things like TikTok are starting to take off because you get to see people being weird and you learn stuff from each other, right? It's not about convictions over and over again. So it's important that we've been kind of over inundated with convictions on the internet. And it's important. That's why it's important to have physical in-person interchange with people so that you can experience that dynamic at play because learning styles and decision-making are two sides of the same coin. It's this idea that human as humans, we need to input 
process and then output. So that means like learn things, take time to coalesce and figure it out and create something and then put that creation out into the world. Regardless of what functions you're using, regardless of how that's coming together, that's sort of like a core pattern of human existence is input, process, output. And if any of those things are blocked, then that's when arguments occur. That's when like we get frustrated. That's when like, why aren't you listening to me? Why aren't you hearing what I'm saying? Because other people have their own methods of input, process, output. And that means honoring that. That means listening to what they're saying because they put a lot of work and thought into their decisions and then asking questions and using your learning style to be curious, to see what they're saying or to say it back to them. So I see what you're saying is this, this, and this. Okay. So if you're a thinker in that moment, you'll, you'll say something to the effect of like, you know, okay, that makes sense. Or, uh, can you explain that this thing a little bit to me? I'm, I'm not sure I quite understand it. And if you're taking the emotional approach, it's just like, I, okay, that means a lot to me. Or, you know, I don't quite resonate with that, um, but I see why it's important to you. Or, you know, something like that. It's about, it's, it's about adding to the conversation regardless. And I think the challenges we get in as thinkers or feelers is we are combating each other all the time and swatting the taco out of each other's hands and, you know, let the person eat the taco. That's theirs. That's fine. They don't have to think like you. They don't have to feel what you're feeling. But it's important to have conversations. And I don't want to say agree to disagree because I hate the terms agree and disagree. I feel like that's sort of invalidating each other's experiences. It's more so about asking each other whether or not it makes sense, asking each other whether or not it resonates with the person. So sense and resonance, I think, are kind of more what I'm talking about in a way. I hope that makes any kind of sense. <laughs> um, if it doesn't, that's okay. Leave comments below. Let me know what you think. But it's really hard to express and show that you're in a learning space. So that's why it's important to get off the internet sometimes. And, you know, I can't see you as a learning person right now. I can't see you listening and nodding and enjoying it or not enjoying it or making a weird face and going like, ah, what is this guy saying? Like, I can't react to that. All I'm doing is like, throwing all of my intellectual garbage at you <laughs> and hoping that you'll take it. Um, but in the process, I'm trying to show my learning style as well, that I'm just like, I'm learning for myself as I do this. I'm kind of just being playful. I'm like, whatever, like, I'm, I'm trying not to take this too seriously. And I think at the end of the day, you know, leaning into our decision making is about not necessarily taking it too seriously, because it's not necessarily just about you know, the dichotomy between thinking and feeling, intuitive and sensing, introversion and extroversion. But like, how can we weave between all of those things? How can we weave between saying what is important to me versus listening to what's important to someone else and balancing those moments and styles and getting practice in that? Because I think we're missing a lot of that. I think that's the value of in-person connection. So, and that's the value of getting feedback for me so that I can make this better. So let me know in the comments below. If you want to send me a YouTube video reaction or something, I don't know, that'd be fun. Let me know what you're thinking. I'm curious. I want to know what's going on for you. And um, uh, we'll continue to keep going with this course. So next we're going to talk about how you show up to the world. And uh, if you go to dopamine.life, there's more articles, podcasts, uh, other things. There's the merch. We have a merch store. We've got things there. And there's also... Um, <clears throat> our courses. We have a finding and maintaining relationships for INTPs course, and we're going to be doing other courses around passive typing and uh, giving advice and all sorts of other things that I've learned through my life experience, being with my partner, and through doing hundreds of episodes of the podcast on mental health empowerment. So go ahead. There's links below. Sign up for email lists. If you're listening to this on the email, you can reply, leave me your thoughts, feedback, questions. Even if it's difficult feedback, I'm willing to take it. Let me know what you think. I will. I just, I just want it to be helpful. I just want to make adjustments. And I'm just trying to help you as a person grow in this personal development 101 course. So with that said, let's move on to how you show up to the world.